When I first started teaching, I spent a lot of time flipping through history textbooks. The events covered in these books always included a predictable set of specifics, the what, the who, the where, and of course, the when. But what almost always seemed to be absent was context, the why, and the how. For example, one thing that I initially found very confusing was the rise of the Third Reich. The books provided plenty of charts and maps and vocabulary words and pictures and timelines. But again, no why and no how. Why were the German people not only tolerant of a leader like Hitler, why did they cheer his rise to power? Why were they so accepting of the atrocities being committed in Germany and around Europe in their name? Why were they so susceptible to the propaganda of Joseph Goebbels? And why were they so short-sighted with respect to the long-term consequences of the Nazi agenda. What had been done to them? If you are a school teacher following a book, the story is simple. It begins in 1939. However, if you are a self-teacher following your own curiosity, you can easily discover that the rise of the Third Reich is a story over a hundred years in the making. In the early 1800s, in the Kingdom of Prussia, Germany's geographic and cultural predecessor, the rulers, intellectuals, and elites were determined to solve a problem. The individualistic and capricious nature of their soldiers, who would do wild and incomprehensible things like run away from gunfire in an attempt to preserve their own life instead of gladly sacrificing themselves for the needs of the state. In an attempt to strip out this independent thinking, and replace it with obedience and conformity, they devised a system. They called it Schule. And within a few generations, it would change the world. surface, the story was that these schools were set up to provide the children of society with an opportunity to be educated, but a closer look reveals almost the opposite to be the truth. These schools were not about actual education, but schooling, indoctrination, processing, molding, conditioning, sorting, and herding children for the needs and desires of the rulers and elites. This school stole from these children their natural gifts, their curiosity, their creativity, their individuality, and replaced them with a blind allegiance to the state and to authority. While in the schools, the message itself might have been subtle, it was heard by the children loud and clear. They didn't have to think for themselves, they only had to trust the thinking of their rulers. The schools perpetuated the very bizarre idea of nationalism. While the children learned that as individuals they were relatively insignificant, they were also being infected with the idea that as a culture, as a collective, they had great significance, and that their culture, their collective, was superior to all other cultures. So much so, in fact, that they were justified in exporting their beliefs to other people in other places. As a result, they allowed themselves to be dragooned into imperial pursuit after imperial pursuit, and they never were able to look closely enough at the situation to recognize how much it was hurting them while at the same time benefiting those in power. And wouldn't you know it, after an extended period of time marching around and trying to stick the flag in different places, they found themselves in complete economic ruin. Having no grasp of historical causality, they gravitated to the feet of anyone who promised to bring about change and set out on a new course. At almost the same time, they were confused about international relations and crippled by fears of foreign invaders and gravitated to the feet of people who claimed that they could be protectors. And they accepted the claims of these people, that their goal was peace, even if at the same time they waged preemptive wars. And sadly, this blind allegiance to the state 
into the fictional collective eventually superseded concerns for their freedom and concerns for their futures as individuals. Which is why they were so shamefully tolerant of a slow and steady march toward a police state. A police state that was necessary because they were told that they weren't just being threatened by external forces, but internal ones as well. This is why they accepted things like the Hindenburg's decree, which took even more of their civil liberties away. This is why they tolerated the establishment of prison camps. It's why they tolerated armed men storming into the homes of peaceful people and putting them behind bars because of their beliefs and behaviors. It's why they were tolerant of school children being told that they should report parental behavior to the authorities. And this failure to value or even understand their own freedom eventually permitted the government to obtain the power to seize and detain anybody they wanted to in the country. And when they say, I want my lawyer, you tell them, shut up. Your time is expired. It permitted the development of a slanted, relativistic legal system filled with ad hoc policies in gray areas. And Manning is the culprit and not the men in the chopper who committed murder. It's a classic case of kill the messenger. And by the time they realized how dangerous the people in power really were and how much additional power they had seized, there was no political action that they could take to solve this problem. And looking back, I hope you can see that it was not one event or one man or one party that was responsible for forcing an entire society into totalitarianism. It was a process, a century in the making. And it began with people being schooled to be stupid. And in the last seven minutes, you might have begun to develop an eerie suspicion that Americans were schooled to the similar system. It's true. In the 1840s, the Prussian system was imported to the United States by the father of public education, Horace Mann. In his seventh annual report to the Massachusetts Board of Education in 1843, Mann praised the Prussian system, even though he was forced to acknowledge the destructive power that it had on the minds of children. But don't panic. Mann simply stated, if Prussia can pervert the benign influences of education to the support of arbitrary power, we can surely employ them for the support and perpetuation of Republican institutions. So that's good.